Five habits of an eight-figure earner is exactly what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys in this video. Now, just inside of this year, um, I went from a seven to an eight-figure earner uh, from January to, I wanna say, July. So in about a six-month period, um, I was able to take my business from seven to eight figures. And I wanna share with you guys exactly how I did it, and hopefully that you guys can get from it. Now, I'm not saying that these were the only things that helped me go from seven, eight figures, but those definitely helped. And having those in my life every single day um, were some of the top things that truly helped me. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and also drop your comments below this video. Let us know what exactly you want to see from this video and be sure to give it a thumbs up. So let's go ahead and to, uh, uh, go into the very first thing um, that I did in January. So uh, simply I was thinking about it the other day and I was like, you know, because of last year, inside of 2020, our business was staggering. It was six figures per month. It was just, you know, just kind of stuck there, right? So multiple seven figures. Uh, I think last year we did 2.2 or something like that uh, in, in revenue. So um, I was thinking, like, what, what exactly, to, you know, what, what changed from last year to this year, right? The very first thing that I could just right away that I did in January, so I moved, um, how would I call it? Change, um, environment change. So environment change, right? This is very important. If I, if I had to tell, is it environment? Is it with an E or an I? I think it's either E or I, I'm not sure. Um, if I had to tell you one thing, move out. Regardless where you live, move out. If you've been living there for more than two years, move out, do something else. Um, this just put so much pressure on me to truly like focus, which is going to be the second thing here. Um, but I lived in San Diego, California for 14 years. Prior to that, I was in Detroit. Well, uh, San Diego from 2007, uh, 2017 to so 13, 14 years. And then before that, I lived one year in Detroit. And then before that, I came from Iraq for 16 years. That's where I lived, right? So the very first thing that I did was I... I, um, I, I lived in San Diego for 14 years. I went to high school there. I, I got married there. My first girlfriend, I mean, friends, everything. Parents are there. My wife's parents are there. Everybody is in San Diego, right? And I just, I pretty much grew up there, right? So to me, it was like, I know everybody. Regardless where I go, I'm always gonna come back to my comfort zone, which is my parents, my family, you know, my friends, all that stuff. And I felt like, I still remember it was, I think around my birthday in 2020 or 20, yeah, 2020. Actually, it was probably April or so when COVID happened and I just was very upset because for about four or five months now, we were at the same level. In fact, our business was going down, if anything, and I was just so mad. And I, I just woke up one day and I'm like, you know what, I need to change my environment. So I convinced my wife to take her to, uh, her birthday is June 30th. So I took, I, we celebrated her birthday in, my, in Florida. We spent, I think, 10, or, 10 days or two weeks here. We went to South Florida, to Miami, and then we went to, uh, Fort, we checked out Fort Lauderdale. We flew to Tampa and Sweetwater and all that. It's like mid-central Florida, kind of, just to kind of look around. And deep down in my mind, I'm like looking at where I'm going to live next. But to her, it was like we're celebrating her birthday, and it was also showing her another thing. Because to her, trying to take her away from her family was impossible. I already had a problem with moving away from like from the city where we always lived and where all of our family lived to like downtown San Diego, which was like 15 minutes away, let alone going across, you know, across country. So I knew I was going to have a hard time there. So I just wanted to take her there just to let her experience. And trust me, it wasn't, it was a terrible experience because we're used to really nice weather in the summer in San Diego. And then I'm not sure if you've ever been to Florida, but July, June, July, it's like a plus, you know, a hundred plus and it's very humid, it's very disgusting. So I was very disappointed, but I still wanted to do it. I knew I wanted to do it. And then for the next couple of months, I just started working into convincing my wife that we need to move. In January 10th, we moved to Miami without seeing the apartment. We got it online. We walked in here, no car, no nothing. We just walked in with two suitcases. Our furniture didn't arrive until two weeks, three weeks later. Our car didn't arrive until two weeks later. We just literally, we went to Walmart, picked up a mattress, and we slept on the floor pretty much for the next two weeks. We had nothing here. I just made sure that there was internet service. They came in the day before, set it up. And for the first week, I still remember I was sick to my stomach. I just wanted to go back home. But I knew that if I kept on grinding and staying there, it was going to truly help me in the long run. And that takes me to number two. Number two is focus. 
You see, this, doing this, helped me get this done. Because now, every Friday we used to go hang out with her family. Every Saturday we used to go hang out with my family. Um, once or twice a week I would hang out with my friends and then she would hang out with her friends. So truly, I only had three or four days per week where I focused just mainly on my business. Since January until now that I'm recording this video in November, we have, she's gone to San Diego multiple times. I've only gone to San Diego one time in May because we had multiple weddings. And then her family came here last month and that's it. Otherwise, I have met nobody but me. It's only been me and her. We go out twice per week. And then the rest of the week, I'm home. I work from day until night. There is a gym here. There's a pool here. I have everything that I need inside of our building. And I chose to live here because of the amenities and everything else that's here. And I've just been focused 24 seven on my business, improving my business, getting our students the best results possible in the shortest time possible, and then just scaling the business, right? So that's this very second thing. The third thing they have to look into is, um, let me see, I forgot what it was. So change of environment, focus, and then the third thing is you want to make sure that what you're building, you need a team to help you build whatever it is that you're building. So this is where it comes team. And then this, I think this is how you spell steak, but I'll, or percentage or whatever you want to call it. I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Any, any, to try to accomplish anything, you can't do it alone. Now, if you're a beginner entrepreneur, you're probably gonna do everything by yourself, right? I know when I was first starting out, I did everything. But then my business didn't start scaling until I started bringing help. And in the first, in the beginning, you're gonna delegate things. Like if you're selling on Amazon, you're probably gonna find somebody to create your listing. Maybe manage your PPC campaigns. Maybe do product research for you, right? And then maybe you're gonna hire a full-time VA that's gonna do most things for you. And then maybe a second full-time VA. And then you're gonna outsource this thing. And then accounting, and then CPA, and then this, and then that, and then copywriter for your listings. And then little by little, you now have a team. One thing that's very important is that you, okay, that's the word that I'm looking for. In, uh, incentive, I think this is how you spell it. I think, I'm not sure. Incentivize, anybody that you bring to your team, do not give them salary. I realized a long time ago that employees are only gonna give you as much as that five, 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 dollars per hour that, they, that you pay them. The only person that's gonna be invested in the business as much as you are is if somebody is a partner or is an owner just like you are. Because you're only invested in your own business. Why am I gonna invest in your business when you don't give a shit about me, right? If the business does $1 or $1 million, you're gonna pay me $2,000 a month. So I'm gonna to try to do the little thing possible to just get the job done. But if somebody is incentivized and has some type of a percentage in your business and whatever it is that you're doing, will want the business to grow because as the business grows, they grow and you want to make sure that people feel appreciated and they are compensated and they are incentivized to keep growing the top of the line, okay? Now, if you are watching this video and enjoying it so far, please smash the thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you haven't done so, so far. And also, if you're trying to sell on Amazon and want to learn directly from BJK University, check the link below this video where we explain to you exactly how that works. Now, th so the first thing is, uh, um, changing your environment. The second thing is focus. The third thing is building a solid team. Number four is making sure that you are dreaming big, that you are planning big, that you're always looking in the future because if you don't have something big in the future driving you towards it, you're not going to keep growing. So this is going to be um, big, big goals. And I know this sounds silly and sounds like simple, but trust me, like, I don't know what you were expecting when you came to this video. Maybe you thought it was going to be this like crazy strategy, but usually the things that work are the simplest things. Like this has been the biggest driver to our business, the biggest driver. And I've allowed my team to think bigger than me, to actually be the thing that's driving me instead of me driving them. And that's only because this was true because they knew they were incentivized, because they knew that the bigger the company got, the bigger their share got, and the more money they made, right? So being thinking big and having big goals is so important. Just understand one thing. If you're not growing, you're dying. You can't be steady. Like sometimes I hear people talk about, yeah, we've been hovering around blah, blah, blah for the last six, seven months. I'm like, wait, what? What are you talking about? We've grown 700% inside of this year. 
How can you hover around this? Like, how do you even, how are you even excited to show up to work every day and operate? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how people do that, right? So big dreams. And then always, always, and this is another thing. This is kind of like, this is A, and then this is B. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, not improved, but keep changing, keep increasing, increasing goal. So increasing goal. So say if you first, when you first got started, it was 10K per month right? So say it was this. Once you got to like 6 or 7k, then you want to say, okay, I'm, uh, my goal is going to be 15k a month. Once you got to like 10 or 12, then say, okay, my goal is now 20k per month. And then just keep simply increasing it because see, at first, like there is, there's this, uh, this analogy. It's like, if you're, if you're trying to, um, I think it was, I'm not sure what it was. And it was, I guess this this farmer that hired these people to like, to harvest like a hundred acres or something like that. So when they came, when they showed up to work, they're looking at all this, you know, all this ground. They're like, dude, how are we going to do all that? It's like, you know what? Don't worry about all that. He took a stick and then he just threw it. And he's like, do you see that stick? Let's just worry about that right now. Let's just get there. Let's just get there. Right. But you see two things here. Number one, there was a huge goal. So like, let's say you want to make a hundred K a month right? You can't start with this as your goal. This is like what's driving me in the future, but then start with 10K, right? And then once you get to 10, go to 15, then 20. And then once you get to 20, let's go to 40. And once you get it to 40, let's go to 70. Once you get to 70, okay, hundred is a piece of cake now, right? So you just want to do increments, but you want to have something in the future that's driving you towards it, right? Now, number five, wow, I completely screwed this up. Uh, so number five, uh, um, so big thing, and then number five, making sure that you have a reward system. Okay, this is really huge as well. What a reward system does is that it creates a, um, why are we doing this? Why are we making, why do we want to make more money? Why do you want, want to, why, why do we want to improve our lifestyle? Why do we want more in life? Why do we want to accomplish more? At the end of the day, it's because of something, right? So maybe you're a parent and for you, it's like, well, it's because of my kids. I want to spend more time with my kids. Great. So take them to Disneyland. And then what I would suggest that you do is you, I created this exercise for our team yesterday. And then it's how much do you currently make? How much do you want to make in 60 days? Put that date down. Don't just say 60 days and it's random. No, no, no. It's January 27th, 2022. Okay. When you get there, how are you going to reward yourself? If you don't get there, what will you do? Who's going to hold you accountable to get there? Same thing, six months. How much do you want to make in six months? Put that date down. Don't just say six months. It's uh, March or April, May, whatever, right? Okay. How much do you want to make? Cool. How will you reward yourself when you get there? So what that does, it's, you're, it's like, you know, the reason why people say TGIF, good, you know, thanks God is Friday or whatever the, the saying is. That's because, and then it's like all the entire week they're working towards this because there's a reward at the end. They're going to go watch a football game or they're going to do whatever, whatever. So now they're going to make sure that they do their job right throughout the entire week. Same thing for you. But for you, it's not just, I'm just going to half-ass my job and that's it. I'm going to get to the weekend. No, I'm going to get to this goal and I have to get this goal and do not reward yourself. And that's very important. Do not, do not, don't reward unless goal achieved. Right? So this is very important. Do not reward yourself unless the goal is achieved. Because if you reward yourself before the goal is achieved, or even without, let's say the 60 days is there and you didn't even achieve the goal, uh, you didn't even achieve the goal, but you still go and get the reward, then subconsciously it's like, oh, I can, I can, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty soft. I don't need to get the goal and I'll still get the reward. For me, I realized a long time ago, I didn't like to travel. I didn't like to buy expensive stuff. So for me, it was, you know what? I love, I love, and if you're following me for any length of time, you probably know, I love good dinners. I love good night out, right? 
And I usually drink old fashioned, which is a whiskey drink, and I love good steak. So every Wednesday, every, every Sunday, me and my wife go out. And it's usually just to, you know, to break up the week a little bit, you know, because sometimes I've realized going from Monday to Sunday, especially working 10, 12 hours every single week at an eight figure scale and they're just bam, bam, bam going all the time, sometimes can take a toll on you, right? And maybe you can go a month, two months, six months, but to be able to, to last long, and that's very important. And obviously in the beginning, your reward should be smaller. Like before, when we did go out, we'd spend $100, $150. Now I don't even look at the check. We will spend sometimes $1,000 on dinner. Again, this taken me 10 years to get here, so do not compare yourself to me. I'm running an eight-figure company. You're in a, a different situation, right? So it's very important to have a reward system so that way you can keep going, so that way you can keep doing the thing and then keep scaling and keep wanting to improve. Just, just remember, if you're not growing, you're dying. Hope this video found you well. If you did, please smash the thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to the channel. And also, if you want to learn from BJK University directly, check the link below this video. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.